Welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. Over the last two lessons, we've learned about basic, simple lines and shapes and how to put them together in patterns and how to make those patterns a little bit more interesting by changing things up a little as we go. Today, we're going to keep talking about all those same concepts of lines, shapes, and patterns and we're going to make a beautiful caterpillar today. We're also going to talk about a new word, background. We hinted at this a little bit in the last lesson, but we're really going to dive into that word today, background. So what is the background? Does that mean back of my paper? No, no. Background means what's above, what's below, what's to the sides. We don't want a big empty nothing, do we? In Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, the background is a wall with a window and the landscape that we see through the window. In Monet's Woman with a Parasol, the background is the blue sky and the green grass. When we make our caterpillar drawings today, we need to make sure that they also have a background. We're going to be creating a caterpillar drawing, and there are a lot of parts of this picture that are going to have patterns or repetition in them. We talked about patterns in our last lesson, so you should already know what that means. What, what does a pattern mean again? Ah, uh, that's right. A pattern is anytime something repeats. A pattern is anytime something repeats. A pattern is anytime something repeats. 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 We're going to use patterns to decorate our caterpillars but we haven't drawn our caterpillars yet. Let's do that first. So, first things first, we gotta draw the caterpillar. What you're not gonna do, you don't want to just draw a long wiggly wormy shape with a face on it and antennas on it because this A doesn't look very much like a caterpillar and B, there's no repetition to it. So when we actually look at a caterpillar in real life, we see little sections that are kind of stuck together. So we're going to draw that as circles. Now, when we do that, I don't want teeny tiny circles because then uh, my caterpillar won't have enough space to draw patterns in it. And I don't want my circles to be so big they fill up the entire page because I want to be able to draw the sky above it and the ground below it. So a nice medium-sized circle, and we'll start on one corner, and we'll work our way across the page. You can use any color for your caterpillar, but we're making circles, and we're going to bump them up next to each other so they're touching, and make a bunch of circles that are about the same size. So here I have two circles, I need a third. Some people at this point say it looks like a snowman, but keep going. It's not gonna look like a snowman when we're done. On my paper, I have five circles going across. If your circles are a little bit smaller, you might have six or seven. If your circles are a little bit bigger, you might only have four. But this is a great start. Notice how it fills the bottom of the page. There's a little bit of space underneath it and a whole lot of space up above it. So we've already started using shapes and using repetition or pattern. See, we're repeating that same shape again and again. Just like we've been talking about for the last two lessons. I think a good next step for this caterpillar would be the face. Now, is he going to have a face on every single one of those circles? There are some times when repeating yourself doesn't make sense. This caterpillar has his face just on the left. Does it have to be on the left? Could I put the face in the middle? No, that wouldn't make any sense. Neither would these two uh, circles. This circle is where the face is on that caterpillar. But what if I put the circle here? I know some of you might be thinking, no, that's his backside. We don't want to put a face on his backside. But wait, watch this. I'm going to draw two circles with dots in them. Those are his eyes. I'm going to give him a cute little round nose and a happy smile. 
And I'm going to give him two antennas with little spirals at the top. And since I drew the face on this side, his back end is over here. So you could have a caterpillar with the face on the left where it looks like he's walking to the left. Walk this way! Or you could have the face on the right where it looks like he's walking to the right. Walk this way! Either way is great. The next step is to draw the feet. Here we're going to be doing some repetition again, aren't we? On this caterpillar, I have two feet for every circle. That's a great number because it just looks really nice. But is that the number of feet a caterpillar has in real life? Caterpillars in real life actually only have one, two, three, four, five, six legs. But they have a lot of little nubby things on their tummy that look kind of like legs and that they use kind of like legs. But only six of them are actual feet. Does that mean we have to only draw six feet on our caterpillar? No. We can draw as many as we want. I personally think they look great having two under each circle. But notice what's going to be different. On my first caterpillar, the feet are pointing to the left. Walk this way! Like a backwards letter L. Because my caterpillar's face is on that side. My new caterpillar, he's facing the other way. Walk this way! So his feet need to be facing the other way. Walk this way! like a forwards letter L, like a regular capital L. So I'm going to do a bunch of L's, two L's on each circle. Now we have uh, the beginnings of a beautiful caterpillar, but um, he, he doesn't feel very soft yet. One of the things that we consider when we're making patterns is texture. Texture refers to how things feel or how things look like they would feel if you could touch them. Not how things feel emotionally on the inside, but how things feel like to the touch. So like bumpy, smooth, slimy, hairy, soft, hard, those kind of things. Those are textures. If you were to feel a caterpillar's skin, he feels soft and fuzzy because of these little tiny hairs that go all the way across his back. So, we want to draw those all the way across the tops of these circles. Are we going to make big long lines? No. We're going to make teeny tiny short lines, like these. Lots and lots of teeny lines. These go across the top of all the circles, including the head, right there where the antennas are. So you can see I've got the hairs going across the head and across the back of the caterpillar's body. So we've made another pattern, or we've done some more repetition, and this time it gave some feeling, some texture, to how that caterpillar would feel if you could go touch it. And the last type of patterns we need to add. If you look at each one of these four circles in the back, not the face, because the face is different. Each one of these circles in the back has a different pattern. Are these patterns that you would see on a real caterpillar? Maybe, probably not. No, these are just patterns that I made up just to have some fun and just to make our picture look more neat and interesting. So on my new caterpillar, I could copy the same four patterns here, or I could make up new ones. I plan some things out. I come up with some ideas. Maybe I really like the spiral. Well, that's one that I already did. 
on this caterpillar. I could do it again if I want. Or maybe you say, I really like the dotted lines and I really like the wavy lines. So I could put those two together. That's very similar to what I did here. Here I used wavy lines with dash lines. Hmm. Or maybe you say there's a shape you really like. Maybe you really like triangles or you really like circles and you just wanna fill up a whole area with those shapes. That's what I did here. I just made a whole bunch of circles that fill up the whole space. Is that a pattern? Yes, because it repeats the same shape over and over again. And then here I just chose straight and wavy, straight and wavy, straight and wavy. So there's no wrong way. I think one thing that might be really fun is to do a bunch of circles, but do it a different way from this. Instead of having them in rows next to each other, I'm going to have a circle with a circle inside of it and a circle inside of it and a circle inside of it. Maybe for my next pattern, I want to do a triangle line with a straight line and a triangle line with a straight line and a triangle line. And I guess there's a little bit of room up at the top for another straight line. Maybe for my next pattern, I want to just use one kind of line, just wavy lines. But instead of having, you know, alternating back and forth between two different kinds of lines, I'll let the spaces between the lines be part of my pattern. So I could have two wavy lines really close together, and then a space, an empty space, and then two wavy lines really close together and then an empty space, and then two wavy lines really close together, and then an empty space. This is the part where a lot of people start to say that these circles are starting to look kind of like Easter eggs. Yeah, they kind of do. Isn't that fun? And I've got one more circle. I need one more pattern. You know, these two patterns both go horizontal. This one goes in circles. Maybe I want a pattern that goes vertical or up and down. Maybe over here, I'll do a zigzag and two straight lines and a zigzag and two straight lines. On the other side of this zigzag, I still need two straight lines and then a zigzag. See how much fun it is? Now it's your turn. You decide what kinds of patterns you want in your caterpillar. If you want, you can pause the video right here and look at the patterns I've made for ideas. After you have finished your caterpillar, we have to look at the whole rest of the page. I may be done with my caterpillar, but I haven't drawn the ground underneath him or the sky up above him. Right now, he's walking in a big white nothing. Now it's time to start thinking about the background. What will the rest of the picture around your caterpillar look like? Before I show you some examples of what might be on the ground or what might be in the sky, why don't you pause the video and take a moment to think about what you might put in the sky or on the ground. Some of the things that might go on the ground underneath his feet are grass, rocks, dirt, mud, branches, leaves, maybe a sidewalk or a road. Some of the things that might go in the sky are the sun, clouds, rain, birds, bees, butterflies, or anything that might fly in the sky like Superman. Or we haven't talked about a nighttime idea. It could be a moon and some stars. If you take a look at my finished example here, you see that I kind of stopped focusing on patterns. 
I did repeat these lines across the bottom for grass. But when I got to the sky, I just made a sun and a cloud and a butterfly. That's not really a pattern. That's nothing being repeated. It's just a bunch of different things. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But because we have been focusing on pattern and repetition for the entire project here, perhaps it makes more sense to do something like this. Notice that the grass is lines that repeat, vertical lines going across. Notice that the sky is full of repeating stars. Also notice that there's one thing in the sky that stands out as different from everything else. The moon is the one part of the sky that's different, just like the face of the caterpillar is the one part of the caterpillar that's different. It's okay to have certain parts of your picture that stand out because they are different from everything around them, especially when you focused your picture on lots of repetition and patterns. Having one thing that stands out as different can pull the viewer's eyes and make people look at those places. Is there something else that you might put in the sky that repeats a lot of the same thing? Maybe you could have a flock of birds, 20 birds flying up in the sky. Maybe you could have a whole swarm of bees all flying across the sky. Maybe you could do 12 butterflies flying in the sky. I really do like the way that butterflies work with this picture, just because we all know that, you know, caterpillars and butterflies are the same thing, right? Caterpillars turn into butterflies, don't they? So I think butterflies fit with this project really well. But I also think stars, anything that gets repeated across the sky, to me, that just seems like a better idea. So now it's your turn. You've got some ideas for what might be in the sky and for what might be on the ground. You figure out what you want. And when you're done drawing those things with crayons, you can paint over it with watercolor paints. Notice that when you paint over your crayons with watercolor paints, you can still see those crayon lines even though you've painted on top of them. And there you are, your finished pattern caterpillar. Pattern pillar. Catter pattern? You decide what to call it. Wow, we learned a lot in this lesson. We talked about texture, that's how things feel when you touch them. We learned about the background and making sure that your caterpillars or whatever you draw aren't just floating in the middle of a big white nothing. We also continued to learn about building a picture using simple lines and simple shapes and patterns. In our next lesson, we're going to continue putting all of those different ideas together and create some pictures of cupcakes. I can't wait to see you then.